$200 per head. That's what this method saved on my last group of cattle, and I'm using something that most farmers leave rotting in the field, corn stover. Yeah, the dried stalks and leaves left after corn harvest. I know it sounds crazy, but the math is undeniable. When you properly process and incorporate corn stover into your fattening ration, you can replace up to 35% of your expensive feed inputs without sacrificing any weight gain. Actually, in some cases, the gain is better. But here's the critical part nobody understands. You can't just feed them raw corn stover. The processing method makes all the difference between wasted money and massive savings. I tested four different approaches, and only one actually worked. The wrong method can actually harm your cattle's digestion, but the right method unlocks nutritional value that's hidden in the fiber. The process starts with understanding what you're actually dealing with. See, corn stover isn't just trash left in the field. It contains 7 to 9% crude protein, 40 to 45% neutral detergent fiber, and about 55% total digestible nutrients when processed correctly. The problem? That fiber is locked up tight in lignin structures that cattle can't break down naturally. This is where 90% of farmers fail. They throw raw stover in front of their cattle and wonder why the animals sort through it, waste half, and barely maintain weight. I learned this the expensive way. My first attempt was a disaster. I baled the corn stover, stored it dry, and fed it whole. The cattle ate maybe 30% of it. The rest trampled into bedding. I calculated I was losing $83 per ton in wasted material. But I wasn't ready to give up because the math still worked on paper. If corn stover costs you $20 to $30 per ton to harvest and store, and it can replace feed costing $200 to $250 per ton, you're looking at massive margins, but only if the cattle actually eat it and digest it properly. So I tested method number two, chopping. I ran the stover through a tub grinder, reducing particle size to about 2 to 3 inches. Better results, maybe 55% consumption. The cattle could handle it easier, but I was still seeing too much waste, and the weight gains weren't matching my corn silage control group. Something was still missing. The fiber was still locked up. The rumen bacteria couldn't access the nutrients fast enough. Then, I discovered something that changed everything, and this is where you need to pay close attention because this is the turning point. The nutritional value of corn stover isn't just about what's in it, it's about what can be released during digestion. And there's a biological process that breaks down those lignin bonds before the feed even enters the animal. The third method I tested involved moisture and time. Here's what I did. Instead of storing the corn stover bone dry, I increased moisture content to 30 to 35% and packed it tight in a pile, covered with plastic, just like ensiling. I let it sit for minimum 30 days. During that time, naturally occurring bacteria and enzymes started breaking down the complex fiber structures. The result? 72% consumption rate and weight gains within 8% of my corn silage group. Now we were talking real savings, but I wasn't satisfied with 8% lower gains. I wanted equal or better. That's when I added the fourth element, the one that pushed this method over the edge, urea. Before you panic, let me explain the science. Corn stover is energy rich, but protein poor. Cattle need nitrogen to build muscle and maintain rumen function. When you add 3% urea by weight during the ensiling process, you accomplish two massive things. First, the ammonia released from urea breakdown further breaks down those lignin bonds, increasing digestibility by an additional 12 to 15%. Second, you're boosting the crude protein equivalent from 8% up to 13 or 14%, which is right in the sweet spot for growing and fattening cattle. But here's the critical detail everyone misses, and if you get this wrong, you can poison your cattle. You cannot just dump urea on dry corn stover. The moisture is essential. You need that 30 to 35% moisture content so the urea dissolves and distributes evenly throughout the mass. And you must mix it thoroughly. I use a mixer wagon and spray a urea solution while chopping and mixing. 3 pounds of urea dissolved in water per 100 pounds of chopped corn stover. Mix for minimum 8 minutes. Pack tight, seal with plastic, wait 30 to 45 days before feeding. The results? 
my last group of 60 steers gained an average of 3.1 pounds per day over a 120-day finishing period. That's nearly identical to my control group on a corn silage-based ration. But here's the beautiful part. My feed cost per head was $203 lower. $203 per animal. On 60 head, that's $12,180 in pure profit I wouldn't have had otherwise. Now, let me walk you through the complete process step by step because the details matter. First, timing of harvest. You want to harvest corn stover when moisture is still in the 15 to 20% range right after grain harvest. If you wait and it dries to 5%, you'll need to add water back, which is extra work and cost. Second, chopping. Particle size matters. Too long, the cattle sort and waste. Too short, you risk acidosis. Aim for 2 to 4 inches. A tub grinder or forage chopper works perfect. Third, urea application. Mix 3 pounds of urea per 100 pounds of fresh corn stover. Dissolve the urea in water first for even distribution. I use about 2 gallons of water per 100 pounds to get that moisture up to 35%. Fourth, packing and sealing. Pack as tight as possible. Oxygen is your enemy. It causes heating, mold, and nutrient loss. Cover with quality plastic silage cover weighted down tight. Fifth, storage time. Minimum 30 days, optimal is 45 to 60 days. This fermentation period is non-negotiable. When it's ready to feed, you'll notice the color has darkened slightly. It has a sweet fermented smell, not rotten, and the texture is softer. Your cattle will notice too. They'll clean it up. Now for the feeding strategy. Don't just switch overnight. Transition over 7 to 10 days, gradually increasing the treated corn stover portion while decreasing your previous roughage source. I replace up to 35% of my total ration dry matter with this treated corn stover. Beyond that, you might see diminished gains. Here's a practical ration example that worked for my finishing steers. 40% treated corn stover, 35% corn grain, 15% protein supplement, 8% molasses for palatability, and 2% vitamin and mineral premix. Cost per ton, $147. My previous ration using corn silage, $261 per ton. Same gains, massive cost difference. But let's talk about the mistakes you must avoid, because I see farmers making these constantly. Mistake number one, using moldy or weather-damaged corn stover. If it's already degraded in the field, no amount of processing will fix it. Start with quality material. Mistake number two, uneven urea distribution. Hot spots with too much urea will cause refusal or toxicity. Cold spots with no urea won't get the digestibility boost. Mix thoroughly. Mistake number three, inadequate sealing. Even small air leaks cause heat and spoilage. Use good plastic and seal edges completely. Mistake number four, feeding too soon. I know you're excited to see results, but that fermentation time is when the magic happens. Wait the full 45 days. Mistake number five, no transition period. Sudden ration changes stress the rumen. Transition slowly. And mistake number six, ignoring body condition. Monitor your cattle closely the first 30 days. Weigh them, watch manure consistency, adjust as needed. Every operation is slightly different. Now, some of you are thinking, this sounds complicated. Maybe it's not worth it. Let me give you perspective. Setting up this system took me about three days of focused work for a batch that fed 60 head for four months. Three days of work for over $12,000 in savings. That's $4,000 per day return on labor. Show me another farm task with that return. And here's what nobody talks about. Environmental benefit. Those corn stover acres aren't going to waste anymore. You're recycling nutrients, reducing erosion, and lowering your carbon footprint by producing feed on farm instead of buying shipped in products. You're building a more resilient, self-sufficient operation. This method works for small operations and large ones. If you only have 10 head, scale it down. Make a smaller pile. The principles don't change. If you have 500 head, scale up. The economics get even better with volume. The key is committing to the process and doing it right. So here's my challenge to you. Calculate what you're currently spending on roughage per head. 
Then calculate what corn stover costs you to harvest, process, and store. Run the numbers. I'm confident you'll find the same margins I did. And if you're already using corn stover but not treating it with urea and ensiling it, you're leaving huge value on the table. Make the upgrade. Your profit margins will thank you. We're building a community here of cattle producers who think differently, who aren't afraid to challenge conventional methods, and who prioritize both profitability and animal performance. If this information added value to your operation, hit that subscribe button for Biggest Bulls and Cow. We're releasing content every week that can save you money and improve your herd. Drop a comment below and tell me, are you already using corn stover or is this something new you're going to try? Let's learn from each other and share this video with another cattle producer who needs to see it. Together, we're raising the bar for what's possible in this industry. I'll see you in a next one.